Now that we've talked so much about ventilation, about moving air in and out of the lungs and the airflow and the things that affect that, it's time to talk instead about respiration. If you remember, respiration is the exchange of gases between the lungs and the blood. And this exchange of gas takes place at the respiratory membrane. The respiratory membrane is where the capillaries surrounding the alveoli meet the alveoli themselves. So if we zoom in here, the respiratory membrane in includes the simple squamous cells around the alveoli. So here's an alveolar cell, very, very thin. And it also includes the squamous cell around the capillary. So here we can see the capillary cell. Again, it's very thin. Between these two, we have a thin layer of basement membrane that's holding them together. So anything that's going to move between the lungs and the blood is going to have to cross several layers of membrane. It's going to have to go from inside the lung into the alveolar cell, out of the alveolar cell on the other side, into the capillary cell, and then out of the capillary cell on the other side into the blood. And then it usually has to go into the red blood cells as well, so that means crossing another membrane. The respiratory membrane is really thin. Any idea why it needs to be thin? It has to be thin because we need to have diffusion across that membrane. If we're going to have oxygen moving from the lungs into the blood, we don't want it to have to go through a really thick membrane. That would take forever. If we're trying to get CO2 from the blood into the lungs, we don't want it to go through a thick membrane. That would take forever. So the respiratory membrane is very thin so that the gases can be exchanged across it very quickly. And when we're talking about the diffusion of gases, gases are going to diffuse from areas of higher partial pressure to areas of lower partial pressure. Partial pressure is nothing more than just a measure of the concentration of a gas. So if I have a, so if I have a high partial pressure of oxygen, that means I have a high concentration of oxygen. And a low partial pressure of oxygen would be a low concentration of oxygen. Gases want to move from high partial pressure to low partial pressure, just like everything else likes to move from areas of high concentration to areas of lower concentration. I want to look a little more closely at what's going on in the body to actually regulate the diffusion of oxygen. How do we get oxygen to go where we want it to go? It all depends on the partial pressure or the concentration of the oxygen. Let's start in the alveoli of the lungs. When we breathe air into our lungs, our alveoli have a relatively high partial pressure of oxygen. It's about 104 millimeters of mercury, but that exact number in the units don't matter, as long as you realize that you have a high partial pressure of oxygen in your alveoli when you breathe in. Compared to that, you have a low partial pressure of oxygen in your blood. Remember where this blood is coming from when it gets to the lungs. Your blood just circulated through all of your tissues in your body and back up to the right side of your heart. Then the right side of your heart is pushing that low oxygen blood from the body up to your lungs. High partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli compared to a lower partial pressure of oxygen in the blood. Which way is the oxygen going to go? It goes from higher partial pressure to lower partial pressure. So oxygen will be diffusing from the alveoli into the blood. By the time the blood has left your lungs and gone down to your heart, it has a relatively high partial pressure of oxygen still, about 95 millimeters of mercury. It's that 95 millimeter mercury partial pressure of oxygen that goes through your arteries and out into your tissues. So the blood that's leaving your heart to go out into your tissues has a high partial pressure of oxygen. Your actual tissues themselves, all of your cells and your tissue fluids, your cells are using up oxygen all the time. So they have a low level of oxygen. The partial pressure in your tissue fluid in the fluid around your cells, the partial pressure of oxygen there is only about 40 millimeters of mercury. It's pretty low because again, those tissues are constantly using up the oxygen. So when we bring high oxygen blood down to the low oxygen tissues, oxygen then will diffuse from the blood into the tissues. It leaves the blood and diffuses into the tissues and goes to the cells.
that deoxygenated blood then comes from the tissues back up to the heart and goes up to the lungs, where high oxygen in the alveoli diffuses into the low oxygen blood, making the blood higher oxygen. The high oxygen blood goes out to the tissues. Oxygen then diffuses from the high oxygen blood into the tissues. Now we have deoxygenated blood. That deoxygenated blood comes back up to the lungs again to be reoxygenated. So it's all about the differences between the amount of oxygen in the lungs and in the blood, and in the blood and in the tissues, that lets us get the oxygen from the lungs into the blood, and then from the blood into the tissues where we really need it. If we look at CO2, we see the same sort of situation at play. And when we're talking about CO2, I want to talk first about what's going on in the alveoli. When our blood comes back from the body, it's high in carbon dioxide. A high partial pressure of CO2 is about 46 millimeters of mercury. So we have a high partial pressure of CO2 coming to the lungs. In our alveoli, we have a low concentration of CO2. There's a low concentration of CO2 in the air that's in our lungs. If we have high CO2 in the blood and low CO2 in the lungs, which way is the CO2 going to diffuse? From the high concentration in the blood into the low concentration of the alveoli. So carbon dioxide diffuses from the blood into the alveoli so we can breathe it out. As the blood unloads its carbon dioxide into the alveoli, the blood that leaves the lungs has a low concentration of carbon dioxide. High in oxygen, low in carbon dioxide. That low carbon dioxide blood goes out into the tissues, and the tissues, remember, are always using oxygen and always making CO2. The tissues have a high level of CO2 because they're always making CO2. If you have blood that has a low concentration of CO2 in it, and then you have a high concentration in the surrounding tissues, which way is the CO2 going to diffuse? From your tissues and cells into your blood. So the CO2 diffuses from the cells into the blood. That blood goes back up to the lungs. Now the blood has a high level of CO2 in it. CO2 diffuses from the blood into the alveoli so we can breathe it out. 